This episode is sponsored by Wondrium, a subscription service where you can find the answers to everything you've ever wondered about, and some things you never imagined you would wonder about. Head to wondrium.com slash microcosmos for a free trial. Microcosmos is like many tiny oceans all around us filled with its own fantastic creatures. You might imagine this paramecium as a barge traveling through those waters. All along its edges are many cilia at work, beating and steering it along. The striations that stretch down its body are on full display, long and smooth until the paramecium brushes up against its neighbors, and those lines compress against each other, turning the barge into maybe more of a blimp. Whatever large mode of transportation you choose to compare it to, though, the paramecium is slow and steady. Except that actually, it isn't. The slowness, the steadiness, we did that. All thanks to the wonder of slow motion. Unless we note otherwise, all of the footage that you are going to be seeing in this video today has been slowed down. James, our master of microscopes, filmed these videos with a high-speed camera. We don't have one of those really fancy cameras that can record tens of thousands of frames per second, but it does record at 240 frames per second, which lets us show you footage that is eight times slower than what we would normally show on this channel. And the results, we think, are beautiful and kind of soothing, and I've been really looking forward to sharing them with you. Don't get us wrong, the microcosmos at full speed is beautiful and soothing as well, but like with this ciliate here, sometimes the spinning and whirling happens so quickly that it's difficult to make out the details. We keep just getting a glance of it before it moves out of frame or twists out of focus, and describing the movements it makes seems to take more time than the movement itself actually does. But while we cannot command the ciliate into the right position, we can slow it down after the fact. And that is amazing. I mean, imagine the work that early microscopists had to do centuries before video even existed to illustrate with words and with drawings what they saw, to evoke movements in the microcosmos for others who would never be able to see those exact movements. And not only can we share those moments with tens or hundreds of thousands of people, we can slow them down to see new details in them, like the large vacuole opening and closing at one end of this ciliate. Slowing down the microcosmos does not necessarily mean everything travels at the same slow speed, though. The giant blepharisma and spirostomum here, for example, may be idly passing through, but they are surrounded on all sides by the still frantic rotations and vibrations of corkscrew-shaped bacteria. And at the other end, we have the spiky ciliate actinobelina, almost static except for its toxic tentacles waving like blue blades of grass in a microscopic breeze. The movements are subtle, and they can lull you into a sense that nothing is really happening. But this is the microcosmos. There's always something happening. It just takes some patience and attention to notice. A 
Over time, the actinobalina's tentacles have stretched out, making the organism look like a faceless pufferfish. Like we said, we are fortunate to have the technology to see these acts unfold. But this is not the only way to stretch time in the microcosmos. In the early 20th century, for example, scientists wanted to be able to see the movement of cilia more clearly. After all, cilia is a remarkable feat of coordination and movement driven not by limbs, but by hair-like organelles. However, one cannot simply ask a cilia to slow down a bit so that there's time to take notes and ask questions. It will move at its own speed on its own time. So scientists turned to reagents to do what's called fixation, an act that's like freezing the cells in a moment of time, with its last moments on display, like a memory stuck on repeat until it slowly degrades away. Now we're being a bit melodramatic about the effects of fixation, because we can be. For our purposes, video gives us all we need to look at microbes without knowingly putting them at risk. We can see this stentor's cilia beating, creating a curled path through its body. Even the texture of the cilia seems almost tangible like this, like you could imagine running your hands across this microbe and feeling the silky fringe brushing your fingertips. And for us, with what we hope to see of the microcosmos, that is enough. But fixation is a useful technique in biology that is still used today. And for the scientists studying cilia motion, fixation allowed them to see cilia more clearly, to make out the structures and coordination at work. And you can see that movement here on this didinium, one small band wrapped around the middle and a larger band hanging like a giant mustache. As the camera shifts focus, the hair along the organism's body becomes less visible, and instead, the only visible cilia are the ones flapping on the side of the organism. Those coordinated movements we see, the ones that scientists used chemical reagents and electron microscopy to describe, is called the metachronal wave. It is each cilia beating just slightly behind one neighbor and ahead of the next, like a crowd doing the wave in a stadium. As each wave travels through individuals and then the crowd, the organism moves. The microcosmos travels at many speeds. We see it every week with each new video on this channel and the microbes we watch together. And it is, to us at least, nice to know that however much we can slow down together to enjoy this, it is always possible to go just a bit slower. But when we look deeper, however we do it, somehow there's always something new to find. But also, always another breath we can take just to think, to imagine, and to enjoy. So thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. And thank you also to Wondrium for sponsoring this episode. Wondrium is where you can find the answer to everything you've ever wondered about and some things you never imagined you would wonder about. Their carefully curated collection of short and long-form videos, tutorials, how-tos, travelogues, documentaries, and more is academically comprehensive, thoroughly researched, relentlessly entertaining, and presented by engaging experts. In a nutshell, Wondrium is the place for minds that wonder. There you can find incredible courses like Mysteries of the Microscopic World, where they dive into the world of microbes and discuss how they function, how we discovered them, how they harm and help us, and how we continue to compete, coexist, and co-evolve with them. If you're looking to be inspired, Wondrium might be right for you. And they're giving Journey to the Microcosmos viewers a free trial. So head on over to wondrium.com microcosmos to subscribe. 
hey, look, there's a bunch of names on your screen right now. These people are folks who, I don't know if they did it slowly or quickly, maybe they watched like a year of episodes before they decided, or maybe the moment they saw it, they went to patreon.com slash journey to micro, and they became our Patreon patrons. And we appreciate it so, so much. You can go to patreon.com slash journey to micro if you want to become one of them. If you want to see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, you can check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you want to see more from us, there's always a subscribe button somewhere nearby.